On this edition of Denzi Now, we're getting through episode 20 of Common Rider Bill. Welcome back to Denzi Now here on Geek Carolina. I'm your host, Mike, from Electric City Sentai Denzi Caster, as if you didn't know. And today starts a double feature of Denzi Now this week on the channel. Uh, I've got to play catch up. I'm behind on Kamen Rider Build, and I feel ashamed of myself. So uh, we're going to be doing a double dose of Denzi Now this week, revolving around Kamen Rider Build. And uh, I've got to say... We're looking today, episode 17 through 20. This is the first time thus far in the run of this series that um, I've shook my head a little bit. I've got to be honest. Um, so real quick, the four episodes we're talking about. Um, episode 17, Rider Wars Start. Episode 18, The Golden Soldier. Episode 19, The Forbidden Item. And episode 20, the Devil's Trigger. So, um, let's talk about these episodes and, and kind of um, some some general stuff that's coming up. Because, folks, I, I will say this about the show, and the statement I'm about to make remains mostly true. Um, the show really doesn't have much in the way of filler, and, and that that much remains. Common Rider build introduces new concepts, new story developments, new powers, new something, pretty much every episode. For me, this is must-see TV. I, I, I have to try to watch this. I watch it in four episode batches for you guys, as you know, but um, if it wasn't for that, I'd be watching it every week. So let's chat about this for a second. Um, this episode, The Writer Wars Start... Um, Basically, war has been declared. Um, officially, war is on. Um, the Prime Minister of Hokuto, uh, through the, uh, their actions, they, they, war has been declared. It has officially begun. Um, and the Toto government has decided that common riders are viable and perfectly legitimate military weapons. Um, they basically draft, um, they draft build and uh, and uh, cross Z uh, together. They they draft the two of them. You are now soldiers, basically. Um, Sinto, coming under build, tells him, "I do not intend to be a weapon of war." Um, so he winds up agreeing to fight, but. More or less on his own terms. Um, he, he intends to be a defender, not a soldier. Uh, which is fully in keeping with everything we've seen. Because now, with uh, our revelation that Sinto uh, is indeed, uh, albeit with a different face, the creator of the writer system. Uh, that he is the, the devil scientist himself. Um it feels almost like this is his atonement journey at this point. So, um, interesting. Interesting concept. I like the idea of the writers, uh, in this instance, being effectively weaponized infantry of the highest caliber. It, it, it's, to me, it's territory that Common Rider really hasn't gone in before, and... For Kamen Rider, which is a franchise that has been around since 1971, I mean, it, the, the series is, at this point, well over 40 years old, um, it's hard to find something they haven't really done. And you can argue that the Rider systems in some of the previous shows, maybe something like, uh, like Kabuto, um, or even Fies, the Kamen Riders were constructed to be weapons. Even in the original series, the Riders were constructed by Shocker as weapons. Um, however, never have we really seen them truly be weapons of a military structure. And that's something to me that's very new here. And I've, 
I've seen pretty much every Kamen Rider series there is, with one or two exceptions that I haven't seen all of, but I've seen some of. So, it, this is new ground to me. Um, they introduce some new full bottles, they, some new toys and things like that. They give full exposure to some that we haven't seen in full yet. We've seen bits and pieces and previews and sneaks and whatnot. But the bottom line out of these two episodes, uh, or for or this episode rather, is simply that it is all about the internal struggle that Sento is having, um, trying to balance the fact that he is the creator of the Smash, he is the creator of the Rider system, uh, he has brought this potentially great evil upon the world, and now he's actually going to have to deal with it head on. So that is effectively what we get out of these two episodes. Um, the Golden Soldier, which is uh, episode uh, 17, 18, uh, we get sort of the first, um, the first full look at our third common writer for the series, which is common writer Greece, uh, a character named Kazumi Sawatari. Um, now, for those playing the home game, um, Sawatari is played by a gentleman named uh, Kohei Takeda, and Kohei Takeda uh, is a very familiar face if you are a common writer fan, because previously he was in. Uh, Kamen Rider Kiva, and in Kiva he was uh, Otoya Kuranai. He was uh, effectively Kiva's dad. Uh, in the Kiva had two timelines. It had a present day timeline, and then it would have like a an '80s timeline. And he played uh, Kiva's father from the '80s timeline, who was the uh, former holder of. Um, of the Ixa driver, and then later became Dark Kiva, um, and I think he actually went on to play uh, a descendant too in one of the very last episodes. He played a descendant of uh, the hero uh, who, in the future, would become Kamen Rider Kiva. Um, he re would reprise the role in Decade, although it was uh, in a, a guest spot where he was definitively evil. Um, First things first, I liked him as I liked him as Otoya better, um, but the character here, uh, Greece, who we do see uh, briefly in the previous episode, we also see um, some of of his sidekicks in the previous episode as well, um, Akaba, Aoba, and Kiba, um, which for those of you who are following along at home. Um, Red, blue, yellow. Um, they debut in the previous episode essentially as uh, an evolved version of the Smash uh, who give our heroes a, a run for their money. Um, but now we have Grease with his own uh, Sklash driver, which is a prototype driver that we see uh, cross, uh, cross Z, Cross Z using earlier um, in previous episode. Uh, here we see it with Greece. It's the exact same thing. We find out later on this technology has been ratted out <laughs> effectively, that it, it's been given, uh, stolen and then given um, to the Hokuto government, which is what Greece uh, stands for. He is he is effectively the common writer of Hokuto. Um, definitively a villain when we first see him. But he is a very interesting character. And we're going to get more into him here in a minute. Because uh, he's in my likes and dislikes. Forbidden Item is episode 19. Um, we learn more about the Splash Driver. We learn that it is more so than the Build Driver. It is. Absolutely positively a weapon of war. It is meant to, um, for all intent and purpose, increase the aggressive nature of its wearer to the point that they will lose control of themselves and eventually 
give in to that. Um, we wind up with the three crows. That's Akaba, Aoba, and Kiba. Um, we wind up with them um, evolving into this thing where they become hazard smash. They're even stronger than before, uh, though it is at the risk of potentially their lives. Uh, we learn more about uh, Greece and so on and his motivations as a character. And then in the Devil's Trigger, um, we find out about this forbidden item called the Hazard Trigger that has been given to Sento uh, by Bloodstalk. It is effectively uh, classified as top secret, forbidden, never to be used, don't even break in case of emergency. Um, but uh, it permits the hazard form of Kamen Rider build to come out. And uh, essentially, it will turn the build driver and its operator into, uh, for, for want of a better term, a WMD. And if he does not break the form within a certain time frame... He doesn't break the transformation, then um, he more or less goes bonkers and berserk. Um, that's the long and short of it. So let's talk about, as I put my notes away, let's talk about the likes and dislikes out of these episodes. Um, likes. The Splash Driver, uh, while I don't like the driver itself, the concept is dumb. Uh, as far as the aesthetic and look of it, I, it's a juice box driver. Um, <laughs> that's basically what it is. Um, I forgave the bottle gimmick. I really did. I forgave the bottle gimmick because you can, bottles can be drinks, but bottles can also hold chemicals and things like this. A juice box is a juice box. There ain't no two ways about it. That should have been in Common Rider Guy. But the form, the actual look of it is not bad. And the forms, Kamen Rider Grease and uh, the evolved form of uh, Cross Zed, who has a name, I promise, I just don't remember it. Um, what do they call him in here? It's uh, Cross Zed Charge. Um, those forms look really sweet. I like the look of Cross Zed Charge. I like the look of Grease. Um, gold as the majority color of a, of a rider costume is not done very often. And if not done well, it looks terrible. If you have a solid gold metallic costume, you really have to be careful with it, lest it look terribly gaudy. I think they did a pretty good job with Grease. Um, Grease and Cross Zed Charge have effectively the same weapons. I like that touch because it's the same driver, so it makes sense. It's the exact same technology. So this makes sense to me. Um, the Three Crows... Don't like them. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll jump into a bit of the dislike. I, I don't care for the Three Crows. I don't care for them at all. Um, the Three Crows exist effectively, at least at first, as comic relief. They evolve over the course of these episodes to be an emotional touchstone to Grease's backstory. Grease is an amnesiac. Um, for all intent and purpose, he is fighting in order to protect the Three Crows. The story we're basically given is that, um, that Grease Sawatari was a farmer. And that when the Pandora box... Uh, how gets revealed, uh, so on and so forth, and the sky wall goes up, uh, his farm is ruined. The three crows were three of his farm hands, and rather than let them and their families go hungry and what have you and starve to death, uh, he was going to find a way to repay them for all the work they have done for him over the years, and he winds up becoming Greece in order to do that. But he has lost his memory over the course of this. And so even as an amnesiac, he is still fighting in order to 
protect and keep up those who helped him. So they become the three crows to help repay him for everything he's doing, even though he doesn't have to do it. It's actually a pretty cool story. The idea of the person driven by duty, even though he doesn't remember why. Just this internalized sense of, I'm going to do right by these people. And being manipulated into a weapon through his amnesia and his desire uh, to help others. That really kind of makes Greece a very tragic villain at this point in the game. With the Three Crows, it gives an emotional touchstone for him and it gives you a way to tell his story without having to come up with some contrived cockamamie way for him to remember everything or to remember bits and pieces. He doesn't have to remember anything. They remember everything for him. So I think it's an, a really cool storytelling device. The characters themselves are initially goofs and to me, it really does not fit the feel and tone of the show. Uh, the tonal shift was jarring when they first appeared. So I didn't care for that. As they show up more and more, um, or more accurately, as Greece becomes more and more central as Hokuto's sort of front man on the battlefield, then they become less and less less involved, when they make the decision to uh, upgrade themselves, it potentially will kill them in order to help Greece accomplish his mission. Um, it is touching and it is a cool moment, but I can't help but feel that the, the comedic flavor of those characters when they were introduced undercuts it a lot. So um, I, I get the idea of wanting to introduce something haha -ha funny into what is otherwise a dreadfully serious show by common Rider standards. Um, I mean, this is the tone of this show is sort of a throwback to the early Heisei era. But with that said, it, it really does it really is a hard line to to float because if you're not careful, you just go way too far. And instead of being uh, an uplifting thing and something to lighten the tone, it jars the tone and that's not good. Um, Sawatari, Grease himself. Um, like I said, I liked him better as Otoya. Uh, thus far, him, he's playing the amnesiac very well, but the character at this point, uh, to me, reeks of one-dimensionality. I think that is because he is an amnesiac and is little more than a sentient weapon at the moment. Um, he is intent on being strong. He is intent on fighting. We do see through him what Cross Zed could become if he does not sort of heed the cautionary tale and the advice of Sento when it comes to the splash driver because Greece has pretty much given himself over to it and Cross Z hasn't gone that far yet. So uh, I do kind of like the idea of Greece being the way for for. Cross Z to sort of look in the mirror and go, if I'm not careful, I become him. And I live for the fight and finding someone stronger and I kill everyone that isn't. And that's not me. I like that. Um, but in and of itself, there's not a lot of depth yet to Greece's character. And I emphasize yet because uh, the actor himself is very good. Uh, I loved him in Kiva. He was one of the best parts of an otherwise fairly dreadful series to me. Um, I always refer to Kamen Rider Kiva. Who knows? Maybe one day I'll, I'll review it on Denzi Blitz. But I've always referred to Kamen Rider Kiva as half of a good Kamen Rider show. Um, and he's one of the reasons for that. The good half. But he, the character here thus far has not a lot of depth. 
that doesn't bother me overly much, again, yet, because we've only seen him for four episodes. So if they write him out soon, then there was no need for him to be overly deep as a character. But if they keep him around and he stays this shallow, then I got a problem with it because the show has already shown itself to be a show that does really good stories, really in-depth, really well, and, and provides for really cool characters. Um, things I'm looking forward to... I'm looking forward to more of the war. I'm looking forward to the intrigue. This show has shown that it's willing to play with the political and, and the maneuvering and whatnot and the diplomacy. So that I really dig. More of that, please. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing more of Greece and hopefully him evolving and becoming more of a character and less of a weapon. Um, and I'm looking forward to just more of really good storytelling and stuff that moves ahead every single episode. Like I said, not a lot of filler in this show. To me, every single episode has had something new and something that makes that episode worth watching. And if you missed it, you missed something important. So I hope that really keeps up. And I look forward to seeing uh, I look forward to seeing the hazard form of build because we, we see it pop up at the end of 20. Uh, so let's see some more of it and see where it goes, because it's actually a really cool looking suit. Uh, so let's see what it looks like in action. So folks, that wraps up this edition of Denzi Now. Next time we're going to get through episode 24. We're also going to be doing a Denzi Now in the not too distant future on the first four episodes of Lupin Ranger versus Pato Ranger. So look forward to that, because that's another show on my uh, radar right now. Remember, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, give us a thumbs down. Either one's fine, but let us know why in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you want to help us out here at Geek Carolina, pick up a cool t-shirt, kind of like the one I'm wearing. You can find these over at cafepress.com slash ECS Network. Not ECS Network, slash Geek Carolina. We've only been ECS, uh, we've only been Geek Carolina now for three months. You'd think I'd remember, though. So, folks, go pick up a t-shirt at cafepress.com slash Geek Carolina. All those links are down below in the notes. Until next time, folks, I'm Mike. We'll see you around on Denzi Now.